Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, this evening's session of Grad Chat from GSA. My name is Tavid Lasuma. I am the GM for Student Engagement here, and I am luckily uh, accompanied by two very special guests here from People to People Recruitment, and I'll get to them in a minute. Um, and also, I'll allow more people to, to jump in the room as we start to set up. But before we, we get started, um, I'd like to acknowledge um, that I'm actually working on the Yilan, um, Yikult Yilang clan land of the Bumurong, and that's basically St Kilda. Um, and so I'm hosting from here today, and I pay respects to the, um, the elders past and present and uh, recognize the strength, resilience, and capacity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, in this land. So um, as I mentioned, this is part of our Grad Chat series. So Tuesday being our theme of transitioning to work, um, and so we're here with experts, uh, as per usual, to talk about what's going on in the market or actually tips and tricks to help you get ahead of the, the pack, if you like. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our two special guests. So we have Amy Burton and Zara Morton from People to People Recruitment. And Amy Burton specializes in permanent recruitment varying across all areas of legal support, including but not limited to secretaries, PAs, EAs, legal assistants, administrative assistants, receptionists, and paralegals. And also um, with, with Amy tonight is Zara. So Zara Morton has worked um, in the industry as a whole as 10 years and three with people to people and um, works in the accounting and finance recruitment specializing um, in, sorry, specialists encompassing the temporary contract and permanent payroll accounting support and accounting qualified markets. So that's definitely a Zara's a area. <laughs> Whew, I got through that, so thank you. So look, if, if I can, just before we, we keep up as well, um, we have um, uh, this this amazing slide deck here from, from the group at People to People, but we are leaving time for Q&A, so questions and answers. Um, we will ask people to send their Q&A through to uh, the Q&A section. We're gonna disable the chat function now, so at least everyone gets a go to putting their questions into Q&A. And we're gonna also ask you to, um, to uh, to look at the questions that are in there and you can actually upvote them. So if it's a question you actually say, actually, I'd love to know the answer to that, you can like it and what it does, it's a democratic system. So the many likes that you get, it'll push it to the top of the list and hopefully we'll address them first. It's just a way we can manage the multiple questions we get on these sessions uh, and we will try and get through them all. If we can't, we'll absolutely address them post this session and have them attached to the recording that will be on our website. Um, so please bear that in mind. Um, and yeah, before, um, yeah, if there's anything else um, to get started, uh, guys, are, are we ready to, to, to carry on? We're ready to roll. <laughs> Fan fantastic. So um, yeah, uh, we'll, I'll, pass the, I'll pass the baton over to you guys and um, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully have some, some interesting questions come through on this amazing content about your virtual self. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for the very kind intros as well. Um, Whilst both uh, Zara and I are from the Melbourne team, I'm actually in Adelaide. Um, so hence the office environment around me. I don't have a big connect in my house. <laughs> Just as a FYI <laughs> on that. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks so much for your time in joining us this evening. Um, what we want to do is um, talk about how you can be your best virtual self. So there'll be different um, kind of categories within that. Um, so please do think on of some questions as we go. And then at the end of each um, kind of area, we'll have a Q and A. So we'll kind of switch up and then at the end, um, we can go for, you know, five, 10 minutes um, of some strong Q and A and see how we go from there. Um, so in terms of what we'll cover, using video as part of your job application. Um, so in extension um, to your resume and your cover letter, not necessarily in replacement. Um, how you can interview on a video conference platform um, you know, maybe this time last year, uh, that wouldn't necessarily be so key, whilst at the minute, um, you know, that's the only way that you can get into the recruitment process. Um, so we have advice from both clients and candidates on how to successfully interview over video. It might sound easy, but um, there's some really great tips and tricks in how to um, kind of put your best foot forward there. We want to do some virtual housekeeping with you as well. So how to keep your LinkedIn in check um, and also your social media profiles. Um, you know, we all like to give loads of personality in our social media profiles, but we need to make sure whatever is public is also professional for any potential employers. Um, and as I said, we'll have another five to 10 minute Q&A at the end. Oh, 
Awesome. Um, so I'll start off in explaining what a video CV is. Um, so a video CV might sound interesting to some that haven't heard about it um, before. Um, it's generally around 60 seconds and can be up to about three minutes. Um, you obviously don't want to be waffling too much, but you want everything to be snap, um, snappy um, and succinct whilst also getting in kind of the selling points of you and your passion, your personality and your experience. Um, so a video CV is very much an extension of your kind of written resume and your cover letter. Um, you don't want it to be in replacement because otherwise, um, you know, the resume and the cover letter is very much the traditional method and people will still require that as part of your application. Um, and in the video itself, you want to be discussing um, your education, um, if you've got work history already, talking about that and also some hobbies and interests. The reason for the video CV is to show some personality and show your passion as well. So, um, you know, even talking about things that um, it could be an interest that you've actually gained that year or that summer, or um, it could be something that um, you started doing um, with family or friends at a young age. Um, again, you're kind of setting yourself apart from different people by these kind of interesting different things. So um, always keep thinking about that. Um, you want to mention what's motivated you to apply for the position as well. So you can very much have a bio of, hi, I'm Amy, I work in recruitment, I do X, Y, and Z. But if you're not ever giving kind of the punchline, they'll be thinking at the end, okay, well, they seem nice, but I don't know why they want the job. <laughs> um, so definitely explaining your motivation there is key. And ultimately, this is your platform to showcase your personality, your passion, and also your charisma. Um, and uh, some of you may not have done a video CV before, but you may have um, been prompted by an employer to send in a video following an application um, for a graduate program. So you may actually see some similarities there, um, but it is different in that as a video CV, you're kind of jumping the gun. You'll be like, hi. <laughs> hello, this is me, and you're navigating the conversation whilst the response to the graduate application is actually them kind of navigating the, com um, the conversation there. So um, we'd love to hear from you um, and know um, anyone that's used a video CV before or as I described a video answering questions following a graduate application. Um, if you're able to raise your hand in kind of the con control panel, um, if you have, that would be awesome. So we have one so far, two. That's a strong start. <laughs> I'm liking this. <laughs> We've got three. I'll give it another 10 or so seconds, but good to see that um, a few of you have had experience with this. And I um, would love to hear from you in the Q&A of um, maybe an experience of it as well, and possibly a success story would be awesome. Um, so I think we're standing strong at three, which is it's good. I'm happy with three. <laughs> it's better than zero. <laughs> um, okay, cool. All right, moving on. Uh, so I provided here a brief structure um, for those that haven't had experience of um, using video for CV before. Um, so this is a really brief guideline and you can obviously um, add and remove as you feel appropriate. Um, like I said, the, the biggest thing here is this is your moment to really tailor um, the conversation and um, it's your moment to kind of grab the attention of that hiring manager, um, particularly for many hiring managers that aren't used to video being part of the application. So I guess for technology and creative industries, this is really quite commonplace. Whilst, for, whilst in professional services, it might be part of their graduate program, but it's not quite part of normal recruitment for them. Um, but just because it's not normal doesn't mean that you can't start to kind of jump on the trend, which will inevitably happen for professional services. Um, even in just talking to clients 
this week and um, in previous weeks as well about this because I just kind of wanted to get some ideas from um, from hiring managers and um, from people that uh, are very heavily in recruitment, particularly within the legal industry. They're like, this sounds awesome. Like if I got a video from someone and you know, I could understand the selling points and understand why they wanted the job, they'd be the top of the list. So I'm thinking, all right, let's tell, <laughs> let's tell some people about this. This is awesome. So um, yeah, you want to um, show your passion and um, show your enthusiasm, enthusiasm for the, Role. And as you can see towards the end, you want to finish with a bang, explain your motivation um, and why you be an asset with some tangible evidence. You might not have, you know, five, 10 years of work experience, but, um, you know, just explain your motivation behind applying. And I'm sure, you know, that can be enough to at least get you an interview. I think that's the biggest part. Um, and obviously leave your audience with easy instructions on how to contact you. I had a, um, oh, I've gone dark. Oh. <laughs> Um, I had a, a colleague earlier <laughs> say to me, someone sent me a CV and they haven't given me a number. <laughs> and it's just those small things that sometimes, you know, you go to the airport and you've forgotten your passport. Like, I'm sure we've all had those <laughs> kind of mishaps, but you want to make sure that, um, you know, whoever's listening to your video knows how to contact you. I'm going to try and get the lights back on. <laughs> Here we go. It's, it's good to see you working in an eco, eco-friendly office. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, so I'd love to talk you through some of the benefits of using video CV as um, I'm sure those that uh, possibly haven't had a go at it yet might be thinking, oh gosh, you know, why would I want to video myself <laughs> and put it to um, some hiring managers? And um, I've been there. I... Um, with people to people, we do a lot of videos. We um, we send job highlights, we uh, send market insights, and we use video quite heavily in our marketing strategy um, in speaking to both candidates and clients. And um, you know, jumping on video is very confronting. <laughs> I'm sure we've all experienced that, even with Microsoft Teams and Zoom over the last few months. You're constantly looking at your face. And, um, it might be confronting, but it's also a really great opportunity um, to make an excellent first impression. And the best thing about this first impression is that you can edit it, you can change it, you can redo it, um, you can edit any of those moments where you mess up or you think that you're being funny, but you're not, um, and the joke just falls flat. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to kind of erase and edit accordingly. And like I said before, it's inevitably going to enhance your success um, in standing out. Um, I had a position, um, I um, put a position online yesterday afternoon. I think I put it up at say like 3 p.m. And I came in this morning and I had a notification overnight to say you've, re you've reached over 20 applications. And I was like, yeah, I've kind of expected that. No worries. And then I came in this morning and looked. And I had a hundred applications overnight. And I can tell you now, if someone sent me a video CV, I'm on top of the list. <laughs> um, because they're standing out. They're, you know, they're being brave, they're ripping off the band-aid. Um, and it's just setting themselves apart, which I think um, is creating that personality, which I think is great. Um, and as I said before, um, the, uh, video CVs have been limited to the technology and creative arts industry for I'd say probably at least for the last five to 10 years. Um, whilst I do believe that a video CV will become a must have tool um, in the job seekers toolbox um, in the years to come. Um, so this is kind of my warning to you that it's gonna happen. So why not get really good at it now um, and help it, um, help yourself get that dream job because you're doing something different to everyone else as well. And you can do it in a forest like this guy, if you like, for a cool background. <laughs> yeah, that looks awesome. I love that photo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so quickly, I had a couple of questions pop through uh, on this topic. So, I mean, um, are, you, are, you, are you saying like a video CV? Are we talking like this is like the 20 minute chat of who I am or is it the elevator pitch? 
it's more 60 seconds to a couple of minutes of like the way that you could kind of plan it is okay this is the job i've this is the job i'm applying for and these are some of the things that they're looking for and this is a couple of things about their firm which really attracts me to the position so um, you then want to kind of look at you kind of cross-referencing i guess and you're looking at the work experience you've had the passions that you've got and you're thinking as a hiring manager why would they want to hire me mm. and then you're starting to think on your script okay well um the position is within a really progressive firm that um you know they care so much about diversity and inclusion and um you know that's really i find all of that kind of thing really passionate so um, i'm going to talk about some projects that i've done you know during my education where um that's been very prominent and i've i've got involved in x y and z so you don't necessarily have to you know year by year <laughs> of your life talk through everything in a timeline but you want to be kind of having those punch lines of this is why you want to hire me mm. and then your your cv will do everything else and you know your cover letter as well um can talk in a bit more detail um but like i said you're kind of showcasing a little bit so definitely not a 20 minute chat <laughs> yeah okay okay cool and we had a question here from um from cassie uh welcome back cassie they, um are you saying that we that we should we should offer to provide a video CV, even if it's requested from the recruiter uh, not to in the job, job advert? I mean, I guess it's um, that fi fine line. Yeah, if, they, if, they have, if they've asked not to receive it, then I wouldn't aggravate someone with a video CV. Um, but um, I rarely see adverts um, requesting not to receive them, um, particularly within professional services. So. I just feel that professional services um, just haven't haven't encouraged them, I mm. guess. Um, so it's not that they haven't they've said no, but um, yeah, if that's kind of like you kind of you can't you're going to annoy someone <laughs> by sending a video CV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if they've said not, so um, yeah, I'd stay away. Try not to be too creative when it's not not asking you to be creative. Yeah, that's it for sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. And we've got, we got another one here. Um, uh, what sort of quality of video CV, uh, uh, what sort of quality should a video CV be? I mean, do we need access to a really good camera or, I mean. Not necessarily. I, mean, I, think... how, I mean, how crazy do we go? Oh, so I've been using, um, I've been using my Google phone for the last couple of years and I can't argue with the quality of my um, Google phone and I've had colleagues that have used their iPhones to do it. I'm sure that even your webcam on your laptop or something um, could do it as well. It's not, you're, if, unless you're going forward for, you know, a video editor <laughs> position or something in graphics um, or particularly in um, the creative industry, you're going to want, you know, really fine, fine quality whilst um in other industries they're going to be caring more about how you present yourself your content and your delivery um your presentation and stuff okay fantastic yeah it's um it's also possible as well if you if you sign up to zoom um you can record um a video through zoom as well um and then you can um, email the link to your email and utilize that and you can edit from um zoom i think as well once you've saved the video. Fantastic, great tip. Yeah. And so I guess we've got another question here. Um, so if the job ad is silent about the requirement of a video CV, would you re recommend sending one? 100%. Yeah, that is your moment. I feel like that's the, that's the opportunity right now is that no one else is thinking about a video CV. Everyone yeah. else is just thinking, oh, I'll just, I'll send 100 applications today. <laughs> Um, and thinking that setting themselves apart is writing a, a detailed and tailored cover letter, which is definitely key. Um, but frankly, when you're receiving hundreds of applications, your eyes are just, as a hiring manager, your eyes are just glazing over every CV. Whilst a video, someone's going to go, oh, what's this? Click yeah. on it, 30 you know, 60 seconds and they've picked you up, they've picked up your personality, what you're about. 
Fantastic. And I think this, this question just come through and it's probably one other question I was just about to ask is, do you, do you just include the link in a, to the video in the cover letter or is it on the CV or I mean, and what, what's the best approach here? Yeah, so I guess there's a couple of different ways to do it. So if you actually um, use something like Vimeo, for example, then you can actually have the video file itself and then you can attach it as you go through the um, process online. Um, a lot of the time on adverts, you see that email address. Um, and even if that email address isn't on there, um, you can always call through the main switch and say, hey, I'm interested in a paralegal position um, online that's with um, Andrea. Um, can I have her email address um, to send across um, some information? And they'll very likely give you the email address. And then you can send it through as like a thumbnail. Um, so that's just creating the picture from your video and then um, attaching the link to it. Um, I'd always um, also include your written resume and your cover letter in the um, email and just say, hi, I'm attaching uh, my CV, my cover letter, and also a video CV, which um, I actually put together solely for this position because I'm so interested in being um, considered for the role. I really look forward to hearing from you. And then you can always, um, the, the best thing about video is you can then follow up a few weeks, a few days later and say, hey, I was just, um, I just wanted to follow up. Did you get a chance to um, watch my video? Mm. It's a lot more personalized. They already know what you look like and, and everything else. So it's nice, more personalized for sure. Yeah, brilliant. Thank, thanks, Amy. Okay. Was, was that all the, all the questions? I think there's no more questions in, in the bank at the moment, but if there's yeah. any, any more questions, please send them through. And I think we'll have more time again after the next session to talk through um, the whole presentation in general too. But that was video CV. I've actually learned something massive today, to be honest. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> oh, we've got, we've, got, we've got a sneaky one that's just come through. Um, <laughs> uh, are you speaking specifically in an Australian context? Uh, would you recommend a, a video CV in any other countries? I think so. I have recruited in, I recruited in London for over two or so years. It's very much more corporate and traditional. Um, I feel like Australia does follow in its footsteps a little um, sometimes in relation to the, particularly in relation to the recruitment methods. Um, but again, I, I think that you can set yourself apart. Um, I generally think that um, in showing your personality as well. So, um, you know, it, it can sometimes be a bit too much going into an office and handing in your CV. I, I remember those used to be the days <laughs> where an agency would have people turning up with their CV in hand and saying, hey, I'd like to apply for X job. Um, there's not so many people doing that. So um, this is a little bit different. And that, that definitely needs to happen a lot of, a lot of the time in London. Um, I haven't recruited in other countries, but um, I don't see why not. Okay. Well, thank you. Perfect. Um, so during COVID and um, virtual interviews have essentially become the new norm. However, it is becoming more and more common that video interviewing is part of the recruitment process for more volume based recruitment, such as graduate programs, where you find that the first round or the second round of interviews um, have moved to your virtual platforms. Um, they can actually be in the format of a, of a live video interview, which is designed to be essentially the same format as a face to face interview or secondly, a recorded video interview where you are required to submit responses to a series of recorded prompts and questions. So essentially what we have done is created a checklist highlighting what you need to do in order to prepare prior to your virtual interview. Um, and also we'll share some top tips on how to ace your virtual interview as well. Um, so the first thing that I would recommend is to actually check to see if you need to set up an account or to download a new software for the video call service. Um, so some of ex examples of those could include Zoom, uh, Skype or Office Teams. And I definitely recommend doing this ahead of the interview as sometimes they can actually take a little bit of time to download. Where possible, I use a laptop instead of your mobile phone. Um, 
don't try not to use a handheld device uh, like a smartphone or a tablet. Um, if it is unavoidable, I definitely recommend using a selfie stick and positioning um, the camera towards the center of your face so the interviewer isn't left looking at your forehead for the entirety of the interview. Um, I think since we have been in lockdown, I have actually experienced that a number, on a number of occasions where um, the candidate's actually holding their smartphone in front of their face and they're trying to take notes so you're literally looking at the top of their head or their in their hair and it's just not very professional so definitely best to use a selfie stick if you don't have access to a laptop or a computer. Um, secondly test your technology so including your internet connectivity a camera and microphone sit at arm's length away from your computer so that your head and shoulders are well framed by the screen. It is important that the camera is positioned at eye level. Um, if it is necessary, maybe consider putting some books um, beneath your computer to adjust the height. Do a trial run so you can arrange to make a practice call with a family member or a friend to check that everything is working properly. Turn off your phone and silence notifications on your laptop or your computer. Um, I think the last thing that you want is for things um, pinging and um, popping up on the screen um, when you're actually in the middle of an interview. Choose a room with minimal distractions. Sorry, Sarah, just, just on the last point, I mean, yeah. even with wireless headphones, I found out my Bluetooth will start connecting to other devices in, at home while yeah. I'm in the middle <laughs> okay. of talking. And so I think it's important even just to make sure that your devices aren't attached to any other devices in the house because it, it can be extremely distracting. Anyway, just a yes, personal experience. Yeah. Or I even explained something similar to the team this morning, which was, I'm not sure if anyone else gets this with um, Bluetooth headphones, but when I'm on Teams or Zoom, um, if it's connected to my headphones and then something on Outlook happens and I get a notification, it just silences Teams for about 10 mm -hmm. seconds. And then I'm there like, I know someone's talking at me and I'm like, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's annoying. The volume goes really low for like 10 seconds. So yeah. you have to right. repeat yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so choosing a room with minimal distractions, uh, a room with optimal lighting, ideally with lots of natural light. And always remember to sit with light in front of you instead of the light behind you. Go somewhere quiet. So if you do live in a shared house or with family, and um, just make sure that they are aware that you are having an interview and ask them to avoid walking into the room or um, ask them not to make lots of noise during the interview. Dress professionally, so as the, set, the same as what you normally would for a normal interview. Um, it is your time to shine and make a lasting impression. Avoid any dramatic makeup. Um, so definitely try and keep it natural. Um, yeah, avoid maybe red, red lipstick and like lots of dramatic eyeshadow and just try to keep it as natural um, as natural as possible. Just on that as well, there was a story that came from last week, which was um, someone had a client interview, so with um, a direct employer, and they took the um, call for the interview in a supermarket whilst they were doing their food oh. shop. And sometimes you've just got to think, you know, like what, <laughs> what do you think? is going to come out of that interview. You know, you've, you've got to be taken formally and seriously and professionally. And even if it's a temp role for two weeks, um, you know, there's going to be so many people at the minute fighting for work that, um, you know, they, they may be polite and kind of go through the process with you for five or 10 minutes. But after that, they'll just, they'll cut the call. Um, and yeah. that's kind of it. So, um, you know, take it, Always take any interview as seriously as you can. Um, and please do not take an interview whilst you're food shopping. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a great point. I think we had someone on a call last week and um, I think it's okay to say, can I call you right back? I'm not in a place where it's conducive for this. I think, mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's a, a bit more patience now in terms of our situations. I think it's okay mm -hmm. to say, look, just can you give me five minutes or 10 minutes just to get into a quiet space? Yeah, yeah, for sure.
yeah I, I think in the in the long term as well that definitely would be respected and um, by any hiring manager so that they know that you're I guess being proactive and um that you can let them know up front if there are any challenges or issues um but yeah no definitely a good idea to ask if they can call you back in five minutes just once everything is is under control um so i just wanted to share some pictures with you of examples of what not to do um, when you are arranging a, a virtual interview so um i suppose some of these are quite obvious and um, but obviously <laughs> don't have an interview outdoors in the dark and they won't see your face. They'd be literally looking at a black screen. Um, yeah, avoid sitting on your bed, on the carpet, on a sofa, um, like always be at, your, at a desk, be it at, a, at your a dinner table or a workstation. Um, it is not very professional um, if someone's looking I guess up at you and um, with the with the screen kind of sitting on on your lap i don't think anyone um, um looks good at that angle do they no no i was gonna say <laughs> you'd, see, you'd see five of my chins <laughs> <laughs> um as much as your potential future employer would like to see all of your beautiful animals <laughs> yeah best best to avoid having your cats or your dogs jumping on top of you so lock them out of the room it's um yeah definitely best to avoid that <laughs> um so top tips on how to ace your virtual interview uh firstly practice um some of the quest some of the questions um over video with a friend or a peer um, at that point as well, they can also check your internet connection, the sound quality and the position of your camera. Don't assume it's an informal interview due to it being on video and um, be prepared as you would normally prepare for a face to face interview. Be aware of your body language. Uh, so interviewing via video or phone limits the ability to communicate with body language. So it is important to use body language in a clear and a in a professional way. In a face-to-face -face interview, you would normally shake hands at the beginning and at the end of the interview. So instead, you need to be able to think of cues that will help establish the relationship at the start of the interview. Um, use eye contact, smile and a pra a practice a professional wave um, that you can utilise just to build rapport um, from the get-go. Um, make a special effort to build rapport despite potentially that feeling awkward. It allows you to stand out from the crowd and to build a connection with the interviewer. So you can do this by talking about potentially a common interest or by finding a neutral topic to learn more about your interviewer. Um, I find that a lot of candidates that I've been interviewing during lockdown um, have been asking me that, you know, how I'm finding the second wave, for example, of lockdown and if I've developed any new interests or hobbies during this time. Um, I think it's kind of always just an easy question to ask, um, but it does, I guess, help them in seeing your true personality. I think on that as well, it's, um... I think sometimes when you're catching up over a video platform, you kind of rush it because it's like, it's not, you're not in your comfort zone. So you're kind of being impatient with it. And as soon as they're like, okay, well, you know, that's it for us. Those are all the questions. It's very easy to be like, okay, well, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> and quickly click leave or, you know, end meeting. Whilst um, that's actually a moment for you to say, oh, I've actually got some questions that I'd love to ask you. And then be, still be thinking about questions, normally in a normal interview, I guess. But um, you know, what do you enjoy most about your position? And um, you know, why is it that you love coming to work every day? What was it that motivated you to take a position here? And um, particularly if you've done your groundwork and looked on LinkedIn or online um, as to where they've worked previously, it's like, well, I can see that you used to work at an energy firm and now you work at a law firm. Like, I'm sure that's very different. How did you find the change in culture? And it's those kind of things they'll be like, ah, okay, cool. And they get a bit of an ego stroke because they get to talk about themselves for a minute as well. And that's exactly how you do build rapport, like Sarah was saying. Because mm -hmm. um, not everyone will have the confidence at the end to be asking those kind of questions as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, make sure that you're still asking questions throughout um, and asking questions about them as well is really important. I think that's great tips. I just wanted to add there about, you know, um, 
sort of talking like being a, you know, when you said about, you know, how, how, what hobbies did you take up during, you know, the second wave and so sort of, I think traditionally we'd, we'd always like, so the building behind me in my virtual background, it's the building that we were based in on campus, the 1888 building. So when people turned up for interviews, the first question we'd ask you, so you found this okay? Because we were very hard to find on campus, believe it or not. And so, but also the person that was getting interviewed, they'd always say something like, it's such a beautiful building. It's one of those little small talks that helped ease ease the situation of nerves. And I think it's important, you, you, you hit it on the head, Zara, just, just making sure it is still a formal interview, but there are, you know, we're, we're all people at the end of the day. And so I think it's nice to have those little, those little sort of small talks to sort of break ice. Yeah, of course. And in a normal face-to-face -face, um, interview setting, you have kind of like a set, you know, two minute walk or five minute walk to the interview room where you do build that connection and you ask them you know, how the week, your weekend was, et cetera. So you have that time. So it's equally as important to build the rapport when you're, um, when you're on a virtual platform as well. Um, just from what Amy said as well, um, I, I suppose another tip is um, have a look at their website, have a look at their LinkedIn. Is there any um, initiatives or projects that they're currently running? Have, have they been involved in any charity work um, or um, have they gone, I guess, on any runs? Um, like what is it that they are doing? Because that's also something that you could say at the beginning of the interview, you know, oh, I, I noticed um, on LinkedIn that you were involved in this charity day. Um, how did that all go? That's really exciting. Um, so anything where they see that you've actually um, taken the time and invested the time and energy um, to conduct some research, um, I would always encourage you to show that as well. Um, where was I? Yes. So um, be comfortable and confident in the awkward silences or if there are any glitches. Sometimes disruptions like a fire alarm or um, a neighbour using a leaf blower are unavoidable. So if that does happen, um, apology, apologise and explain the situation. Ask if they can still hear you and then continue with the rest of the interview. It's important to be authentic and be your natural self and most importantly, have fun. Use the tools such as your body language, your facial expressions um, to express yourself and let them see your true personality and your true self. Um, follow up with an email. Um, I probably recommend doing this within the first 24 hours after your interview. It's a good, it's a good opportunity to thank them for their time confirming what interests you about the role and letting them know that you are available um, to answer any questions if there's anything in addition that they didn't get to ask during the interview. Um, so it's time again for another Q&A. Fantastic. So if you have any questions uh, in relation to, you know, setting yourself up for that virtual interview, please ask them now. Um, and also any other questions uh, essentially um, that are burning at the moment for for this the type of environment they're in. So, um, I mean, I I have a question. I mean, look. Um, so we, we're actually going through a recruitment process at the moment uh, at GSA, and I, it, it's it's interesting when um, I think now in in so much more is that I'm I'm actually following up with people I've invited to interviews, mm -hmm. and I think just because of, I'm sending out interviews, say invitation, I'm not getting any responses back, and I'm thinking. Should I be chasing them for, you know, did you get my email? Are you coming to the interview? Or do you think it's, it's more appropriate that actually no, no reply is the reply? Or, or what are your thoughts in, in general? Sorry, yeah. it's probably off topic. No, that's actually, that's actually a really good point, um, which we probably should have added into, into our notes. I, I definitely think in, the, in those situations, um, if you do receive an invite, respond. Let them know that you've received the invite and that you will be available, that you look forward um, to meeting them virtually at such and such a time. Yeah, it, 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 thank you. It's interesting because sometimes, you know, do you have an extra message at all? Did you receive it? Well, yeah, I got it. I didn't reply because I wasn't coming. It's like, oh, right. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but, you know, I think yeah. it, it, there is that, you, know, you put a nail on the head there, so just a common courtesy. Um, you know, so uh, to reply to people and make sure because they're taking the time to look at through your, your CV, your application, your selection criteria. I think it's nicest to be respectful. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's kind of 
a, a time to be able to show your true self. Um, if someone doesn't respond, if you don't respond to an email from a potential employer um, about an interview date and time, and um, whether you're attending the interview or not, um, it's another way to stand out from the crowd. So if they're interviewing 30 people and 10 people are responding to emails, well, what does that say about um, how they're, I guess, going to how they're going to act and portray themselves when they actually are working in the company? Mm, absolutely. OK, we've got a couple of questions that just came through here. So um, I understand uh, we want to show initiative and let the interviewers know that we've come prepared, uh, i.e. do some research on LinkedIn, et cetera. How, how do you bring up the conversation without sounding awkward and will not come across as a stalker? A stalker might be too much, uh, but yeah. So th thanks for that, John. Please appreciate it. So any, any comments there? Yeah, look, I completely understand <laughs> where that person is coming from. It, ca it can be quite daunting and, and awkward to bring these things up. Um, if it is something to do, I guess, with their LinkedIn and where they've worked, um, there are normally questions during the interview that, that where they might ask you, um, what is it that you're looking for in your next, in, in your next role? Why did you apply for this role? Um, so I think during those times, it would be a good way um, of bringing um, things up like that and um, so if it is about I guess their profile um, you know you might say look what really interests me um, about the business is that you do um, x y and z initiatives and um, I noticed um, on LinkedIn that you've sponsored such and such and that actually is a passion of mine and um, something similar um, you if it's something then about i guess their work their work history or where they've worked again i think amy touched on this um you know you could say i'm interested in working for um, a company um i'm interested in working for a company um, that um has great teamwork and they're collaborative i noticed you know that you've been working for the business for um for for one year, um, but obviously previously you were at X company X Y Z for ten years. How did you find? How did you find the transition? So you can also, I guess, put it back on them once you've given them an indication as to what you are looking for. It's a great time, um, uh, and it's useful to be able to ask. Well, what can you actually offer as well? It's not all about what you can bring to the table. It's also what you can get from a potential employer. Yeah. I also would like to add on that, that LinkedIn is a professional network. Um, it's not social media. Um, you're not in a dating game and that you've just been spotted, like trying to find out information on the, on the guy or girl that you're going on a date with. You're checking out the professional profile of the person that you're having an interview, interview with. And um, I've had hiring managers say to me, oh, I, I even noticed that Chris, actually looked at my profile, um, you know, a day or so before the interview. And um, it's kind of a bit of an ego boost. They're like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> like you said before, they're just, everyone's a human. Everyone's got feelings and everyone um, likes to know that you've prepared. And, um, you know, you can even kind of give the disclaimer of, like, I wasn't stalking you, <laughs> but obviously I wanted to come fully prepared to my interview and um, wanted to get an understanding of your background and, um, you know, uh, your position as well. Um, so it might feel a bit stalkerish, but um, I promise you it's a bit more of an ego boost. They'll like it. Yeah, and essentially, just to add there too, I think people, you're on LinkedIn for a reason, not because you don't want people to see you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, I think that's that's the other part of it is it's a professional window into someone's career. So yeah, if don't feel bad because you're doing your homework. Yeah, for sure. Um, we've got another question here. This is probably a generic question. Is it a good idea to have a background on the interview? So virtual backgrounds, what do you think? I quite, I, I'm completely um, like chill either way, to be honest. Like loving your, loving the background of yours. <laughs> it's like a 10 out of 10. <laughs> um, I just think that as long as you've got something professional that's not, um, you know, not rude, not provocative or anything like that, um, you know, if you choose to have your apartment or um, something in the background, just making sure it's tidy and clean that you haven't got any of those distractions there. 
Um, but I've seen people of different seniorities have virtual backgrounds, them just have their house in the background. Um, yeah, I think as long as it's all neat and tidy, like absolutely your choice. Yeah, it's it's funny just that. Sorry, Zara. I'll just quickly add in. I just one of the things I had noticed is sort of some of the meetings I've been with. You know, even if it's like meeting with partners, is that I tend to get distracted by virtual backgrounds. So mm -hmm. if it's if it's a solid screen and there's nothing's moving, I I think it's for me anyway. I I prefer that. But if it's one of those video ones, I I lose <laughs> it because I, it was a, there's a call I was in with someone and they had that one where it's you're on a you know in a pacific island and the the, the coconut trees are waving and, oh, and the, the waves the waves are going and i'm just i've lost in i'm lost in the background i think i might I have turned even off. seen that <laughs> oh it's amazing so i think I've, I've, I've stopped listening to the person because i'm more imagining me being on that beach uh, with the waves and yeah you know, that's it you start daydreaming <laughs> so maybe that's that's my two cents yeah and i think as well you know if the room that you're choosing to do your interview in is a, a bet your bedroom and you know you can see your bed or something in the background and you ch choose not to want to do that um then you can have virtual backgrounds that are you know a white i've seen nice ones where it's like a, a white background with like some hanging pot plants and things like that um so i think just something yeah that's that's easy to look at with no distractions can work quite well Fantastic. We've got another one come in here uh, about the camera usage. So it's a, it's advised to look directly at the cam into the camera instead of at the interviewer on your screen, just because sometimes there's a disconnect between the two it, and it may look like you're looking off to the side. Uh, this is actually a good point because I, I'm a culprit of this. So, I mean, what, what's your suggestions? I mean, I mean, I, I, when I, I actually had to interview someone today and I had to tell them at the start, Look, excuse me, while you're answering the questions, I'm actually writing and listening at the same time. So I think that was my, as an interviewer, I was very conscious of, of it not looking like I'm paying attention. So I, in terms of the interviewee, what, what, what's your suggestions? Um, look, the same thing, I think, as what you've mentioned. Um, if you are, for example, going to be writing notes, <laughs> um, let them know. Um, you know, there's going to be some times where I might need to just jot down a couple of notes. So if I'm not looking at you, um, I'm taking notes, but I am obviously still concentrating. I understand what you mean. So, so when I was talking about having the, the camera actually look, um, be at the center of your Focal, like the focal point in the center of your face and um, that is why so if it's if it's not and you you don't have I guess your head and your shoulders um, in the in the video that it, it can look a little bit disjointed especially if you have a poor poor internet connection and so your eyes can be <laughs> looking at all directions if it freezes um, but yeah no I definitely recommend looking kind of more so towards the towards the camera as opposed to um, directly like into the center of your of your screen great thank you yeah. um, another question here um, oh sorry that was a thank you so uh, I think we've, we've, we've answered that one. Um, I think there's no more questions here unless uh, anybody would like to send a, a question into the Q&A. Um, we're open for any questions. Did you have any more? Um, was that the end of the slides this evening? Um, no, we've got a couple more actually. Fantastic. I'm conscious of time. So um, yeah, happy for you guys to, to, to carry on. I don't want to keep everyone as, as long as they have to because it is after hours and um, yeah, respect everyone's time in the session. So thank you. Perfect. Um, so we'll just go to, we're going to touch on best practice on um, social media platforms. We're often asked by candidates whether employers really look at their digital footprint. The short answer is yes, they do. Um, according to Career Builder survey, seven in 10 employers, so 70% of employers use social networking sites to research their candidates during the hiring process. 57% of those respondents found content on a social networking site that caused them not to actually hire a candidate. Um, and these were some of the primary reasons. So number one was a posting of inappropriate photographs, videos, or information. 
um, posting information about, I guess, them going out and socializing, um, discriminatory comments related to race, gender, religion, and if they've lied about qualifications, and they've lied about um, an absence at work, um, or if they've badmouthed their previous company or a fellow employee. But on a positive note, employers also found content that led them to hire a candidate. Um, and these include um, the background information supports their professional qualifications for their job, uh, they are seen to be creative, they've conveyed a professional image, uh, people have posted great references about the candidate, so that could be on LinkedIn, for example. Um, the candidate has po uh, posted some compelling video or other content through social. And the candidate has also interacted with the social media, the company's social media accounts. So the good thing is that you can all manage what can be seen and create a positive presence on social media if potential employers were to audit your profile. So what I would recommend is Googling your name and your email address and having a look at what comes up under the web results and image results. Privatize all of your accounts, including Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Um, I would obviously recommend though allowing access to professional sites such as LinkedIn. Um, if you don't want to privatize your accounts for, on Facebook, for example, you are able to restrict people going past recent, um, recent photos and recent posts. Uh, but I definitely recommend deleting or removing any tags from photos or content which could be deemed to be unprofessional. Lovely. So um, just going on to housekeeping on LinkedIn, um, I will run through this just so there's a bit of time for any questions um, as well. Um, I guess we could do a whole <laughs> session on LinkedIn um, because there's so much information and, and advice there. Um, I guess the real key point is that um, you want everything to be um, the same as your CV. Um, so you need to make sure that your dates, the titles, the descriptions and everything else are exactly the same. Um, if they're different, um, sadly people will see it as you having a low attention to detail or that you're lying on one or the other. So um, please just make sure that they're accurate um, and you want to keep the skills section updated as well. Um, there are some recruiters that um, will um, search on skills. Um, you want to keep growing your network. It might seem a little odd at first, but um, start growing your network and then start liking posts, start sharing them, um, you know, even commenting on different posts and things. Um, and just kind of getting your name out there, I think is, is really great. And um, as you can see here, sharing is caring. So um, this might be in the form of industry news and business updates and interesting reads as well. Um, I guess knowledge is power and um, some of the information that you can learn through LinkedIn articles um, can be really key and um, using your platform to engage as well. Um, for those that were on the presentation I did probably about a month or so ago, um, you can use LinkedIn um, to be contacting mentors and people that may be able to help you with job opportunities as well. So if they can see that you're engaging and liking um, posts from other people in the industry, they're thinking, oh, this is great. You know, this is someone that really takes um, their job and what they want their career very seriously as well. Um, so that's good. Um, please make sure your photo is a professional headshot. Um, you know, we've got all of the resources to make a professional photo ourselves. So um, please don't be sat in um, a beer garden <laughs> having a drink or a cocktail. As lovely as that picture might be, uh, it's just not appropriate for LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, I think I um, went through everything there. Um, download the app as well. Um, I don't um, recommend being on it late hours and you know on weekends and things, but it's good to have the notifications coming through so that you're across it. Um, particularly when um, job postings and things come up, um, it's always good to be one of the first to apply. Um, and particularly if someone um, is speaking to you about a job as well, um, you don't want to miss out on their emails. And um, that was the quickest snapshot on housekeeping on LinkedIn I think I've ever done. So there you go. 
Um, so now going on to um, our last Q&A, but um, yeah, thanks so much for listening everyone. I appreciate it. it's late into the evening um, and everyone's probably quite hungry <laughs> by now. Um, and I've uh, put the contact details for both Zara and I there. Um, we're more than um, happy to hear from you and help as much as we possibly can. Um, and if anyone's got any questions that we can finish on, then by all means, comment them below. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Amy. And yeah, as, as Amy mentioned, please throw some extra questions in there if you have them, because we are just about to close out the session. Um, and we will make sure that this um, recording is put up on our website uh, tomorrow evening or first thing Thursday. Um, and we'll make sure that um, Zara and Amy's emails are part of that on the same page there if anyone has any direct questions, especially about the presentation uh, from this evening. Um, if there are no questions, I'd like to really thank you so much, um, Amy and Zara, for the time you've taken to, to be with us this evening. Uh, people to People Recruitment have always shown support in providing that extra, uh, I mean, a supporting hand for postgraduates here at University of Melbourne through us, and um, it's really appreciated. We've had some great feedback um, from our students and there's another thank you there in the, in the Q&A. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate time and all this information is extremely helpful, especially with this changing time about the job market and what we should do to sort of better ourselves in those, um, in those I guess, stacks of applications that are coming through at, at, at any organisation. So um, don't forget people that also, uh, as I said before, Tuesdays are a transition to, to work evenings where we invite uh, special guests and experts into the room to talk about what's going on and some special tips. Tomorrow's Wednesday, so that's academic support, four till five, and that tomorrow we're with the library services to talk about the uh, other um, resources that are available, especially in this COVID-19 times. And Thursday, um, we have a, a, a session there from 12.30 to 1.30 to supporting postgraduate students um, uh, during this time. So. Please look at our website and Facebook for registration and content details. Uh, we'll also be sending out the link to when this recording is available to anyone that was in the room. So yeah, and on behalf of GSA, thank you, Zara. Thank you, Amy. Really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having us. Amazing. So that's everything from us tonight, guys. So have a good, great evening and keep safe. Good night.